everybody, nice to see you all again. You are with Katie from Rust and Stardust Productions. Now today I'm going to show you another puppet make. So in my last video you got to meet my lovely merman, Bob, the wild man of Orford. So today I thought I'd show you how to make your own version of a mer person. Now you could make a mer maid or a mer man, a mer unicorn, anything you like actually, but I'll show you the, the basics for making your own. Now here's my example that I made earlier. So he is an articulated card merman. Now as I said you could make yours a mermaid. Um, if you look at mine I've given him nice long hair but he's also got a nice long beard as well and he's got beautiful scales on his tail and I've used split pins to make him articulated, which means makes him move. It gives him the scope to have a beautiful fluid movement as he swims through the sea. So I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. Now this is a really lovely kind of puppet because it, if, um, if you want to see it from the front, it's nice and colorful, but you could also put this behind a screen with a light behind it and it would also make a really good shadow puppet as well. So these flat cardboard puppets have a dual purpose, which is brilliant. I really love these. So you can have it so the audience can see it, or you can also use it as a shadow. So it's really versatile and really good fun. So let's get cracking. So first of all, you need some white card, just an ordinary pencil. So you could use felt-tip pens. You could use colouring pencils, paints if you wanted, or a mixture of all of the above. Again, as with most of these crafts, there aren't really any rules. Make it your own. But I've got some nice um, coloured pastels, which are perfect. I've also got a black fine liner pen, which I add some detail on with. I need scissors, and then you need an ordinary glue stick. He needs to be in three pieces. You don't draw him just as one piece, otherwise he wouldn't move. By drawing him into three pieces, so one, two, three, separate pieces, there's then an overlap where you put your pins in, and that is what allows the beautiful articulation. So watch my drawing first, and then it will all make sense when you see your three pieces. So just with a pencil, I'm going to sketch out my design for my merman. So start off with the head, neck, shoulders and the torso, so the body of your merman or mermaid. Then I need you to draw just an oval shape. That's going to be the middle part of his tail. And lastly, you need to draw the lovely fins at the end with a little bit more of the tail. So if you look at mine, you can see we've got one, two, and three, and they're all separate, but we put them together later. Next, it's time to color it in. So I've got blues and greens for my merman, because I want it to look like my puppet, Bob, the wild man of Orford, who is all greens and blues. As I say, you could do a rainbow mermaid, you could do a mer cat, a mer unicorn. That is entirely up to you. This is the part where you can really go crazy, get really creative. I want to see some beautiful, bright, interesting creatures. So let's colour it in. coloured in and you're happy with it. This is where I got my fine liner and I just go around the outline and add any details just because it helps it stand out when you're performing with it. So I've got some swirls for the hair, make sure his eye really shows up in his mouth and also his lovely muscles and then his scales on his tail as well. And it doesn't have to be really neat, it just helps pick out the details that you've drawn in. 
Lovely. So now you should have three sections of your mer person coloured in with that fine liner outline detail. Now it's time to get your scissors and cut it out. Now if you need any help with this, get a grown up to help you. It depends on your design. If you've done it similar to mine, there are a few bits that are a little bit trickier. So have a go, but get a grown up to help you with cutting if you find it a bit tricky. Brilliant, now you should have your three pieces, one, two, and three, laid out in front of you. Again, this is a part that you definitely must get a grown up to help you with. So I need you to open your scissors, grown ups helping, and you need to punch a little hole in the end parts of each of your pieces of your merman. So if I hold up my example, where the pins are, where the pieces overlap, you need to make a little hole in the bottom of the torso and the top of the middle tail, the bottom of the middle tail and the top of the end fin. So you make your holes, then you grab two split pins doesn't matter what size, I've actually got really long split pins here, but it doesn't matter what size, small or large, you can make it work. So whatever you can find, doesn't even matter if they're different sizes, it just adds to the, to the interest of your amazing creature. So then you need to thread your split pin through the end of the torso and in to the top of the middle tail. Turn it over, split the back, and on mine, because it's so long, I need to fold it in a little bit more so those bits don't stick out. But if you've got a smaller split pin, you don't need to worry about doing that. And then you need to do exactly the same on the other end. So then you need to put your split pin through the end of the middle tail and the top of your fin. Turn it over, split those out. And again, I'm folding mine over because they've got really long legs. If you've got a smaller split pin, you don't need to worry about doing that. And then you have your beautiful creature joined together. Now a few finishing touches, turn him over onto his tummy, pop some glue, quite a lot of glue, just prick stick, quite a lot of glue, sort of about where his heart is, so right in the middle of his torso, and get a lollipop stick, a straw, a pencil, a chopstick, any kind of straight, strong object, I've got lollipop sticks, so I'm just gonna stick those on there. If you're using a straw or something like that, um, like a plastic straw, if you've got those, uh, you might just need some sellotape to pop that on the back because Pritt stick won't quite be strong enough. But with any of these, you might just wanna put a little bit of Pritt stick and then just go over the top with some sellotape just to make sure it's really, really strong. And then you need to do exactly the same in the middle of the tail at the end. So pop lots of glue on there, stick, your stick on there, whatever you're using, and then you can always put some sellotape over the top to make that extra secure. And so if I lift mine up, it should look like this from the back. So I've got my two lollipop sticks, my three sections with the two split pins, making it articulated. So if I turn it round, you should now have something a little bit like this and you can have a practice making it look like it's swimming through some beautiful clear seas. And once you've made one, you could make some more. You could make a whole family of mer people or mer creatures and put on a show for yourself or your family to keep you busy and entertain everybody. You could even make a video of it and share it with the rest of the world check with parents before you do that but I would certainly love to see some of your creations now as always if you would like to share your lovely creations with me and my team and the rest of the world whilst we're going through this difficult time please do upload pictures or videos and tag at rust and stardust productions on our social media and we would love to add you to our stories and share your work um, and keep everybody busy and happy. Now that was a nice quick make and I cannot wait to see what things you come up with.
please share, please like and subscribe and comment and all that jazz. If you subscribe to this channel, it means that you'll get notifications every time we add a new video. And I'm trying to do these fairly regularly to keep us all busy. So we've had a few myrrh themed pieces lately. Tune in next time to see what I'm going to share with you next. Thanks everybody, stay safe and see you soon.